Hello, welcome back to City Planner Place, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And it's been a little while, and it's exciting to be home. <laughs> it's uh, We, we just uh, finished up with the week of 5B1C, and we were doing a lot of stuff in Verde Beach and uh, in Clearwater County, and I'm excited to get back to it. So today we're going to focus on building out our bus network in Verde Beach. We're going to completely reconfigure it. But first, I want to take a look at this train station and some of the issues that we're having here. So in the previous episode, I reconfigured our train network. And if you take a look, you can see that there's a lot going on here in terms of ridership. And some of it's bad. <laughs> so we have, with the sports district line, I think we have some significant queuing. Let's take a look. You can see right here at this stop, we have 189, well, it's 190, 100, 200 people queuing here. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. And one of the reasons for this is, I think, the way that we constructed this. So I don't think it's as, it's, it's constructed as logically as it could be. Uh, right now, it's kind of taking people from here to the zoo. And that, there's, there's some value to this route, but I think it could be a lot better. So what we're gonna do is bring this route down to the end of the express line, which I believe is right here at uh, Fireside Be or Fire Beach. And then we're gonna extend this line up all the way over here. And that should take a lot of the pressure off from this particular route. But let's, let's verify that first. So we're gonna hide this line and you can see the express line ends right here. Is that that's not even the express? Actually, the yellow line is the express. So this is the airport sunset line that we are ending here. Truthfully, that probably makes sense. What we might do is actually just get rid of the sports district line and ex I'm going back and forth. And I've I've thought about this and I I've it's it's a challenge. I don't want to slow down the express line, but at the same time. I don't want to force a transfer at the zoo, which is what's happening right now. So what I might do is just kind of create a redundancy here. So I'm gonna modify this route and bring it back. So I'll close this up, go into the trains, or the metro rather, and bring that back here. I'm gonna eliminate this stop and reestablish this. But at the same time, I kind of want the, uh, now that we have the express line going to the zoo, I'm going to take the sports district line and eliminate this stop at the zoo. And that might have been the wrong way to do it. <laughs> so the way that we're going to do that is to... We're going to move this one. Turn off the brown line, the bucks line. And inadvertently delete the whole line. <laughs> so... I'll, uh, I'll redo that real quick. There we go. So this will provide a quick shuttle back and forth to the university. And then if you're coming from out of town, you'll still be able to have a one seat ride all the way to the sports district if that's what you choose to do. So I think that this should serve the area a bit better. That said, let's speed this up for a second and see what's happening in this area. So the utilization's a lot lower, which is good, at least for the time being. It'll, it'll likely change. The Express, do we have any stopping? So right here, lots at the airport. Things aren't so bad over here, but whoa, we're having a power issue. So what's going on with our power? Ah, it's nighttime, <laughs> and we don't have sufficient power in the evening. So we need to fix this. So there's two ways I could go about this. I could be cheap with it and set a policy. Oh, I already have the policy. So what I might need to do is actually build another power, power plant somewhere. So we already have one of these ocean uh, these uh, this one of these ocean thermal energy conversion plants. I think that there's probably merit in adding another one. So that is what I might do. I'm just kind of sneak this in. Actually, it's it's a challenge. 
because I don't want this to be in a place where it creates issues with our boats. I might just add one right over here by our water. And hopefully that provides enough power to resolve some of those issues. Yeah, so now we're good. And the other thing I'm going to do is just eliminate that power usage policy to try to balance our budget a bit. Let's go back in and take a look. And it's still very close at night, but that's okay. And I see that we're, our station over here is done. <laughs> so we'll rebuild that. Now, all of that said, we're going to keep this to daytime and not worry too much about that. And I'm thinking that during the day, yeah, we're in a much better spot. So pleased about that. So there's a lot that we're going to do today. So we have our old bus routes. And I want to isolate those and take a look. So I'm going to turn everything else off. So this is what we currently have for our bus routes. We have this blue line, which kind of meanders around and goes all the way over to the I-10 Industrial Park, Lewis Shores, through Old Verde Beach, Primo Verde. We have this other line that is kind of pinging back and forth between this, um, this bus station that we have here, this Metro Inner City Hub, and then our train station over here. That's a nice route. I don't know how useful it is. And then... See what else we have. We have an ex we have a route that's mirroring our tram, so that's certainly one that we don't necessarily need. Although it does serve, I guess this serves the zoo area and the forest, which we don't really need. This is yeah, this is a wholesale mirroring, and I think that what we need to do again, similar to our other episodes where we focused on transit, is ask why this exists. So we're gonna. Just eliminate these. We can see that River Street is good, uh, an important route. The zoo, we're gonna force all those passengers onto, um, we'll, we'll force them onto the train or, or the, the metro. And we'll also get rid of this other zoo line. The train station is successful and I might just keep that one for the time being. And this blue line going out to Lewis Shores, I do think that even though that's successful, we're going to eliminate that and try to redo it in, in a more logical way. Truthfully, I'm going to just start over with these. I think that, that this will be a time where the city can look at its bus routes and go, what would make the most sense for the city? So I think the first thing that we need to, to think about is how we want to structure our routes. And I'm thinking of these more as end of line in most areas of the, the densest parts of the city. It'll be end of line, um, you know, first and last mile sort of uh, circulators. And in the less dense parts of the city, it will connect up to transfer points, which will transfer you to some of the higher capacity forms of transit. So to start out with, I want to think about some of those transfer opportunities. There's one over here that I missed that I, I, I want to, to work in. So I want to go into these public transport hubs. And when you look, there are a couple of really interesting ones. First of all, over here, this one isn't gonna help us with today's build, but it will help us rectify something with our last build. So we have this, it is a Metro monorail train hub. And this is gonna be helpful today and that we'll be able to bring people here, but we can also consolidate some of this and hopefully free up some land. So we're going to eliminate these and replace it. This will be a significant redevelopment project for the city. That said, there's a lot happening over here already. So we'll need to really give this some thought. So we're gonna just eliminate everything in here. I was trying to figure out the best way to line this up. We have our post office here. <laughs> That's gonna have to move. So the post office will be redeveloped in another area. I'm thinking we, we could bring that around the corner You see me kind of searching for the best place for this. This was not it. <laughs> so I always like to have this prominent corner on a corner and not facing the wrong direction towards a building. That bugs me. Uh, you know, that's probably personal preference. That said, maybe I'll just need to get over myself right now and <laughs> accept that because it's a good location for it. It's just kind of wonky. Uh, so right here, we have another situation where we're going to need to bring our train our line in we have an extra line now which is a good problem to have that'll give us options in the future so we're going to eliminate that road temporarily 
and make our, our connection over here. So lots of eminent domain. There we go. <laughs> We're not making this district all that happy right now, but in the long run, I think that this is a huge benefit to the city. Ooh, now we have a different sort of issue. So I might need to back this out just a little bit more than I had intended to make this work. Now this is gonna be a trick because I wanna get the monorail connected and the monorail is uh, gonna be coming in at a pretty significant angle. It'll let me do that, but I don't know that that's great. <laughs> We're just gonna have to see how that works. That said, it does free up some land for development, so I do appreciate that. I don't think we're going to go all the way towards that trail, though. Let's give it some space. And, uh, and I think that if we can have a couple of targeted trail connections here, that would be good. So we've got those trail connections so people can still walk to the platforms from Evan Street. And then we'll hide some of this with commercial. It's loud already. Commercials would, would make a ton of sense in this area. There was a residential property here. We have a, a pretty decent buffering from our residential. So there's kind of a forested area back here. So I think it makes sense to, to, um, to, to really look at this as an opportunity to do more. So we're going to have commercial or some commercial there. And then I want to take a look at this train line. It's not liking what I did to it. It's also not letting me move it. So hopefully it corrects itself. This is one of those frustrating situations where I can see it's right there. I can't grab it. And I don't know that it's going to let me fix it. So I might need to take a look at that line and try to fix it. I'm going to let this run for a second and see if it corrects itself. Okay, it did. So that's what I was hoping for. And the last thing I want to do is now that we have a, a, a metro station here, we can go over to our Gombe district line and, and make our connection there as well. And I'm actually seeing another opportunity. So maybe this will be kind of an indirect route in comparison to some of our others. Actually, no, I'm going to, I'm going to send this one directly to the sports. Well, no, I'm going to do something unique with this route. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to start this one here. I will head to the sports district. Then I will go to the university. Then I'll go straight back to Lewis Gardens. And the point of this line, this is a, this is redundant a bit with the sports line, but this is to be able to get people in this neighborhood to transfer opportunities. And I'm actually a little dubious on that sports line now because it's not, I, 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 the point wasn't to have a bunch of redundant routes. So I might look at that sports line and just say, we don't need that one anymore. And we will make this the market district, Lewis market line. We'll make that one white. So we are in a better spot there, I think. Now we have all of this transit kind of coming together here, which will provide us a number of opportunities in the future. So let's think of some other places where we could have, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we have had some, uh, some hot times over here in Burr Hills. <laughs> all right, well, wouldn't be Verde Beach without some fires. So this is a spot where I want to think a little bit more about what we're doing. So we've got this ferry pier here, but we have another opportunity, I think, to do something more. So we have this ferry and bus exchange stop, which I think would be a natural place or a natural way to incorporate some sort of bus terminal in the Harbor District. So I think that we are going to pause this, eliminate that, even though we just put that back in here. <laughs> so this will be a bit of a mulligan. I am very regretful <laughs> that I didn't pick up on this one right off the bat. I don't love this elevation change that we're having here, but there's not a lot that I can do without some really significant work here. I'm not sure why this is coming up. I might give it one more attempt. So what I'm gonna do is just try to smooth out everything in this area and hopefully that will prevent some of the craziness that we're seeing over here from occurring. 
still raising up. Let's see if I just move this just slightly, if it lowers. No. <laughs> In fact, it looks like it's just as bad everywhere. I'm wondering if I just let this run for a second. If the water is part of the issue. This is really disappointing. It's not actually improving. If anything, it's gotten worse. And so we have this really significant increase in our grade. I'm just curious to see what it's doing in other places. Also curious if I just, let's eliminate this key wall and see what this looks like. Maybe this is part of the problem. Maybe it just can't figure this out. So what if I eliminate just a portion of that? Ah, even worse. <laughs> so I might need to accept some wonkiness here and try to work within what the game is giving me. And I think I can. I just, I don't love doing that all the time. <laughs> I just kind of, I'd like, I'd like the game to work with me and not against me. But unfortunately, if you've played this game for any length of time, uh, you, you might have in encountered something like this where the game is just not going to work with you. That's okay. We'll figure it out. So there's always a solution. And I think that here, we're just going to want to get some, some really dense foliage here to kind of cover up some of these wonky edges. Oh, that's so bad. That's so bad. I hate it. Oh, boy. So I kind of like that more. Not a lot more, but but kind of. <laughs> so maybe that's our approach. Just be to kind of go with a natural edge here. We can use our slope tool to, to even this out a bit. Didn't mean to keep that one over here. <laughs> so we'll just have a, a little bit of a steeper cliff here and we'll, we'll work with that in a second. You want to clean up all of this extra landscaping I put here. This will probably do the trick. It's just a little bit messier than I'd like it to be. And then I want to fill this back in so we have our uses over here. And we've got to fix this path connection as well. I'm not sure how entirely critical this path is anymore, but we'll keep it. We do need to fix our ferry line, so let's go and do that. Kind of curious we had this line over here and i don't really see it doing anything right now there we go we're back we're back in business <laughs> so good so we've got that going we've established another place for bus transfer opportunities next one i want to think about is actually over here so i was thinking we don't really have a spot over here for bus transfer so to serve this portion of the city i'm I kind of want to divide this into zones. So there's going to be one bus transfer opportunity right here. So this will be a transfer point. We're going to have one right here, another over here, one over here. And I think that's, that's going to be it. That'll cover most of our city. So for our next transfer point, I'm going to take this particular metro rail station with road and convert this into a transfer point. So more eminent domain which is the name of the game when we're putting transit in. <laughs> we're spending the big bucks. Everyone likes that I got rid of that. That's that's the little... Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> All right, so I think that we're good we're here with our zoning. Got everything zoned back up. It's unfortunate that I don't have surface painter to fix up some of this. I'd love to be able to, but it's not in the cards here. So I think the monorail stops will fix themselves, but I think I can just do it too quickly. And now we have another bus transfer opportunity. So last but not least, I know a lot of people have been concerned that uh, Myrtle Park has kind of been shortchanged when it comes to transit. And it's time to change that. And the way that we're going to change that is by adding a bus station over here but I don't want to put that directly off from this collector but temporarily I'm going to so what I'm gonna do is go through here at a local connection 
I want this to be space efficient, so I'm just rotating it around like that. So I made a quick path, or quickly placed that, and I've, I've given myself the opportunity to, to rotate that around. So this location is excellent for a variety of reasons. So first of all, I can get over here if I need, using this road that doesn't have a lot of traffic right here. It's another opportunity to get over to Verde Palms and Lewis Garden District. And in the future, if I wanted to run something up the highway, they could come down here and get down there as well. We could have another interchange here, a real basic one. It'd be very simple to retrofit. So another opportunity. So I think this is an excellent spot to have this particular um, this particular asset. If we wanted to have a, a bus station, this is probably as, as good a place as any. So the one thing that we don't have a lot of are uh, bus, the, the, the bus garages themselves. So we might want to think about that when we're going through this. So I think we have a, a biofuel be, uh, biofuel depot, one of them, maybe? Tops, total, right here. And it's, it's kind of centrally located, but I think we probably want to have one more on the newer, denser side of town. And we want that to have good access to everything, but kind of be in a, probably in a, in a more industrial area. I'm gonna tuck it back here. So I would look at this as some, a building that potentially was an industrial building and then, and then eventually got retrofit uh, into a bus garage. I think that happens more often than you'd, you'd realize. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just kind of, sh I'm gonna shoehorn this in back here a bit in a place that has access to the collector network. It's not the most direct, but it'll do the trick. So now I think we're pretty set on our, our core infrastructure. We just need to configure some routes. So here's where I wanna bring back everything else. We'll take a look and make sure that we're overlaying things in a logical way. Okay, so now we can see our entire network. And I think we're gonna start in the old part of town. We'll start at our very first hub and ask ourselves, where would we want to go from here? I don't think we want to go necessarily from a subway to a bus to a train. We have opportunities to get to this train station elsewhere. So what we really want to do is get to destinations and residential locations within this area. So I like looking at our tourism view because it gives you an idea of where destinations are because they kind of look at every everything that's not residential as a destination. The other thing is you can look at population as another kind of proxy for where you need to go. So you can see that there are large swaths of area where maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense to go. But we definitely need to hit some of these areas where there are high population if there's no other form of transit there. But we know that there's transit in some of these areas. We don't want that to be duplicative. So let's start with this. I'm wondering if I can overlay this. Not gonna let me. So we're gonna have to flip back and forth. But I kind of have an idea. So I wanna get a route that comes through here and goes back here. So we're gonna keep the routes fairly short and serve the areas where we need to go. So I'm spacing these every couple blocks. They're buses, so you'd expect them to provide a lot of access to service. So the thing to keep in mind with a bus is that just because a stop is available doesn't mean that it'll always be used. So you're going to have more of them. Okay, so we have one line down and any bus route, you want to have the ability to go in both directions. So we're going to do that right now. Just completely mirror this route in the opposite direction. So you'd be able to, to really within a couple blocks walk to any any one of these bus stops and hop on. Now we could have provided another opportunity to interface with this subway system, but it's not really all that necessary because there's a stop right there. And that's one of the main reasons I skipped it. So I do wanna go through and be really thoughtful about naming these lines. So we're gonna name this one the historical district line. The one that we see is counterclockwise. So I'm gonna make this one CCW and this one CW. We'll keep those the same color because it's technically the same route. Next, we're gonna have another route that serves Prospect Heights, Primo Verde, and Orchard Park. So again, we'll start that here. We'll go up a different road. 
I'm gonna try to bring this road a couple blocks down from our other stop. And I'll mirror this line again in the opposite direction. And again, we'll go through, we will make this line, we'll make this one green. Let's get an idea of our coverage, and you can see that we've got coverage basically in this entire area now. Next, we need to cover Lewis Shores. So I wanna get that route going, and this will probably be our last route that we're taking from this particular hub. And this is close enough to Myrtle Park that we'll probably cover portions of Myrtle Park, or there'll be a transfer opportunities at a bus stop with Myrtle Park as well. So I'm going to do something a little bit different with this route. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to reach these residential uh, uses over here, but I think I'm going to also run this up to the industrial area to try to to, to to serve two purposes with this route. It'll be to bring people to work and to pick people up at home. So that said, this route will actually take this down and cover the other half of the residential district on the way back around. I have to stop here and finish it. And that one is counterclockwise. Why don't we just get this correct now? So one thing I wanna, I guess, point out that I did with this line is that I adjusted my my stop spacing based on the number of destinations in the area. So I think that's important. If you know you don't have a lot of destinations, there's no reason to try to force in a whole bunch of stops just because you want to mirror your stop spacing. Stop spacing is dynamic and that's one of the beauty uh, or beautiful parts of the buses is that you have the ability to be flexible, add stops, remove stops. You know, like I, I think I missed one over here that I probably should have added because we have some of these factories over here. So now we at least have opened up some opportunities for folks to be able to come over here and you know get to get to work, but we're not having so many stops that the bus is <laughs> stopping all over the place because this is still a freight area. We wanna make sure that we're maintaining that. We have good traffic flow through here. We don't want our buses to be the reason it breaks down. I mean, we have 86%, <laughs> so we don't want to ruin that. So we're good here. We're, we're good. I think that we have a nice transfer system set up here. So you could go take the subway and really get anywhere throughout town by one of these bus routes now. So they're really focusing on that first and last mile. So we're going to do the same thing over here in Myrtle Park. So Myrtle Park is a low density area. We can see that if we take a look at our households, we're not seeing very much density here. It's a lot of single family, one little node here. So we know we definitely wanna get a stop right here. But beyond that, we're just kind of going through the neighborhood. We can't really hit these cul-de-sacs in, in a very significant way or we shouldn't. It would really slow down the route. So we're gonna try to do something, but it's not gonna probably be as great as people in this neighborhood would like. That's just kind of the reality of the design of this neighborhood. It's not very good, at least for transit. I, I think that some people would say, this is a great neighborhood because I don't, you know, I have privacy or I have a, a decent amount of land. And uh, that's fine. Uh, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep going through here. I mentioned we wanna get that one stop and we're gonna mirror this route as well. Okay, so we've got Myrtle Park with a line. We'll make this one simple for ourselves. This will be white. There we go. Now we need this to go somewhere else too. So there's two other places I think are really important to go and that's the Lewis Garden City and then to the I-10 Industrial Park. And what I think we're gonna do here is make our connection with this other line not super important, not as important as getting over here to where we have all of this transit activity. So why don't we start with this over here? So we'll create a new line. We're not gonna focus at all over here. We're just gonna immediately bring this into 
the Garden City. What I think we're going to do is have a loop through here, a fairly significant loop. So we might have some longer stop spacing through here. So this will be the stop where people can walk over to the to the monorail or the metro. So we're going to keep that one right there. Oh, this is a bummer. So because of our roadway network, it's forcing us, rather than being able to take the logical path, kind of just directly across, it's sending us down. So we might need to give this a bit more thought in terms of our stop spacing. What we might do is actually send the bus up into this area that's not yet developed. And maybe this is a good opportunity to actually develop that area. You can see where this gets tricky because I can't just have nice stop spacing because this is a really disjointed roadway network through here. And that's one of the problems with suburban design is, you know, you end up with these networks that are really difficult to design, even, you know, fixed route bus service for. Um, so sometimes you end up going with a shared ride taxi or other sort of demand response service because it's difficult to serve it with anything else. Luckily, there is a, there are connections through here so we can make it work, but there are places that we're missing and it's very evident to see that. It's unfortunate, but I don't really see any other opportunities to kind of make that better, so. Okay, those are close. <laughs> it's not perfect, but they rarely are. So this is gonna be a very important route and then our next route is gonna be getting over to the industrial park. And this will give people over here the opportunity to get over the industrial park and it's kind of making that full connection. And again, I'm going to space these a little bit further apart than I was with some of our other stops. The idea being that people could walk a little bit further to get to these. And we've got this route established as well. So that's it for this station. Let's actually name this. We'll na name this the Myrtle Park Transfer Point. The Lewis Market Grand Station, because we have all of these modes of transit coming together at once. And then, oh, <laughs> we are burning today. We are burning. I wonder, whoa. Oh. All right, we're going to take a break, get this fixed. All right, then it looks like we survived some of these other areas. Just kind of want to pan around a little bit and make sure that we are okay. I've been just cruising through, running this on three. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, so I'm going to stop that for the time being. So, okay. I think we're in a good spot with fires, <laughs> which is... Probably the dumbest thing to say, and maybe Myrtle's upset because we're adding a bunch of bus service, even though we gave her her own station. I don't, I don't know. Wow, we are burning in places we have never burned before. I don't know what's going on, but it's wild. <laughs> so something, something is not happy with me today. All right, well, we'll just move on and maybe catch a cool fire at some point. <laughs> So we don't need to do as much in this area with bus routes, but there are some places that lack adequate service. So I think that those places in particular, we could have a route kind of going up along the park, not doing a ton, maybe going through the government center. But I think that we're going to want to be really careful with these bus routes because we don't want them to be so direct that they start taking a whole bunch of passengers that would otherwise be on the train. So I do think I'm going to have a longer stop spacing. Actually, I'm rethinking this a little bit because I want to get this back over here to get this up to Bass. And then on Bass, I think we're going to skip most of the uh, most of Bass. We'll have maybe two stops. Go into our government district and then just circle back around in here. So this will be just one route that has a loop. So this one we won't need to mirror because the route itself is mirroring. And we are opening up some opportunities for transfers with other modes. Ooh, we've got an issue here. 
keep an eye on that and take it take a look I will add a stop there I might move this one up so that it's a little bit closer to this pedestrian path add one more over here because this is the area we're really trying to serve anyway so I don't know what's happening here with our monorail uh, why it's bugging out but we're gonna take a look at that real quick before we go any further interesting so that's our Keller house line and it is supposed to stop there but I think it's supposed to go further down so that's curious I don't know why that we had we had that issue here but we'll fix it so what the route is supposed to do is continue on down here and offer an opportunity to transfer there so now people can at least get on <laughs> you know, and transfer from the other line that we have so that'll be a, a, a hopefully that fix stays i don't know why exactly that broke so kind of a, a weird situation there so anyway back to buses we want this to be the government line we'll make this one up right now we'll make this one orange there we go i don't think we have orange yet and uh, lose it and I'm hoping this this line worries me. I'm worried that it's gonna get completely jammed up because of everything that it's doing. It provides a lot of access. So I'm hoping that this, we don't use this all that often. So I am gonna bring another line back here to Parkside and Sugar Hill. And I'm gonna have very few stops in between. So what I'm going to do is orient this towards a street that really doesn't have any transit. So when you come down here, down on Fuego Heights, you see that there's kind of an area that's a transit desert. So we're going to go through here and add transit through. And then kind of bring this up the back. And my idea with these routes at this particular station is rather than having mirroring routes, we're just going to have these routes that go in both directions. Let's see what street this is. Because this is really... Okay, let's grab that. So there we go. So that's our new line that goes up here. You could transfer between these because you could walk a, a couple blocks. Not ideal. But again, I want to make this perhaps not as, as efficient as it would be to use instead of our metro so that might be all that we put over here at this transfer facility actually i want there to be a way to interface oh well, no we, we're, we're okay we'll, we'll leave that for now if we add more later that's fine but we're going to focus on this one right now and this one's going to have more routes going to it because we don't really have much transit in some of these lower density areas over here or in the drake oil industry area so the first thing I want to do is this is going to cover a route that kind of covers the entire Drake oil industry. So with this particular route, I was really reluctant to go anywhere near the freight terminal. I don't want to have buses back there, you know, me messing things up. So I did make our previous route black but i'm going to turn that gray because obviously this is the oil line and this should be black <laughs> so our next one we're gonna have a line that kind of comes up the back end and serves willow park cherry hills and prospect meadows park and we'll come up back this way this is kind of another one of those tricky areas to serve because of the disjointed roadway network it's not that bad, but it's there. there's some trickiness here. I'm also seeing, you see all these buses coming, and I don't want the, the, the bus route to get stuck in that. This tells me that we might need a signal right here to help get those buses out. So this one I'm going to loop back around, kind of because of how inefficient it would be to loop this one back around. There we go, that's our mirroring route. Let's get this one set up as well. We'll call this one Willow Park. 
Now, while I'm here and thinking of it, we're going to take care of that junction that's going to be the problem. You see all the buses coming up here, so we're going to add a signalized intersection. This will happen routinely with transit where you know that there's a heavy transit movement, so as a result, you prioritize signals in a couple of areas to ensure that you can make the transit movements in an orderly fashion. So right here, so this is more than transit movements. We have heavy freight movements through here. And we've kind of added to that with our transit. So reasonably, you might actually want to add this asymmetrical road here to ensure that we have the ability to have dedicated lanes. Might do the exact same thing here as well. So now this is kind of a collector going through here and we don't have to feel as bad about prioritizing these movements. So I'm trying to give lanes where it makes sense to do so. It's vanilla, so it's it's kind of a it's it's a it's a tricky thing to to accomplish in a logical way. So I'm just going to leave I'm going to leave the dual lanes in the way out because I think that's probably where our movement is the heaviest anyway. Um, one opportunity I'm seeing that I might have missed is a path connection here. So I'm going to add that while we're over here looking at things. Especially now that we're adding bus service, we want to make sure that we have good pedestrian connectivity wherever we can. Okay, so back to our bus service. I think we're like, we're about, uh, I'd say, one route away from where I want to end this. And that is I want a route that comes through here and serves this area. And then I think we're in a in a fairly good spot. There are certainly some minor gaps in coverage. I'd say the back half of Gombe could could use a little bit better coverage, but it's not the end of the world. And certainly Parkside could use some additional coverage. So maybe we'll kind of do double duty. So this, ooh, that's yeah. We'll we'll, we'll add one more here at a minimum. So it'll let me place a bus stop here, but that's going to be a very challenging movement. So I'm going to avoid that at all costs. And I, I think I am going to extend this route up, make this one a longer route that's doing some really specialized things, going to the senior uh, homes over here, and then coming back down. We'll name this one Parkside. We don't need to mirror this one because we are in a fine spot with this. It, 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 it mirrors itself. So we're, we're good there. I do think as since I pointed out that this is kind of a weak area with transit. No, I'm going to leave it because I think that they could walk over to this and there's already a ton of transit issues. <laughs> this is kind of our next kind of emerging issues. We're going to need to go through these routes to see where we might have some issues. So I'm going to organize this by line name. So we're at least, you know, in a, in a place where we're mirroring or where we can keep track of things. And we're going to see that there are some of these stops that there's just a lot of people at. What a mess. <laughs> so let's go through here. You can see that there are a couple of stops here. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. We're going to really need to kick this, the service up on this one to be able to take care of this. I wish we had articulated buses in the base game because it would help us alleviate some of this. I'm going to go, there was 13 buses, we're going to go with 40. <laughs> and uh, hopefully relieve some of the pressure here. This is really the only form of transit through the area. People have been walking, so I don't want them to, to, to spawn cars Although I guess it's at the end of a cul-de-sac. So if you're going to do it, that's the spot. <laughs> and hopefully this will do the trick. And it's interesting because we're pulling people from the other side. Even though we added this, this route over here, there's still demand to head this way. You can see that we have all of these buses that should be pulling people, but they're not. Okay, well, we need to keep an eye on this. this the, the, the ridership on this is only going to grow next one so right here we have high ridership there's a couple of stops where we have issues so this is we are currently 
right by the zoo in our inner city bus terminal. So this is the line that goes the old historic Verde Beach. It's not that bad. It's clearing most of the stops. There's one stop right over here where you can kind of transfer between the tram. It makes sense that that's the one that we're seeing issues. So I'm gonna kick this up, add a couple more buses, and hopefully we'll be able to clear this stop and then the one before it. But that's, I'm okay with the way that one's turning out. The other side, same situation. We've got one stop. Now this one's a little more severe, but it's only one stop that's kind of messed up. So I'm going to hopefully increase the number of buses to 10 to mirror the other side. Hopefully that'll clear it. Next, I-10. We're good. I-10 is our first route that truthfully we could probably cut service on this one. Um, but I don't think it's bad to have too much service. I know that sometimes when people see an empty bus in a downtown area or something, you know, they could freak out and think, well, you see empty buses, obviously no one's using it. Well, no, you know, you with bus service, you want it to always seem like uh, it's reliable, like there's a, like you can get on it. And the presence of an empty bus can can signify in some people's minds that yeah, I can I can take that. I can rely on it. I see a bus there. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have buses that are empty sometimes, and then other times you're gonna have it where it's crush capacity, and you know you gotta have both of those uh, to, to, to demonstrate that the bus is a reliable form of transportation that can be trusted any time of day. So anyway, I-10 is good. So Lewis, this is the line that goes to Lewis Shores. And this is another line that's looking like it's doing all right. This is a longer route, but it's clearing all of our stops. In the opposite direction, same deal. So we're good with this one. Awesome, it's just a couple of routes. And you know, it's the ones in the downtown area that I thought might be problematic. Now this next one could be trouble too. So this is going to the Lewis Market District. Wow, totally fine. The other direction, also good. We're clearing all of our stops, so I think we're getting really lucky. Wow, look at our ridership. It's just crazy. That's, we're doing really well. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, Myrtle Park. We're fine there. This is probably way too much service. In fact, I'm going to take this one down. We're good with three buses here. So I wish I could operate in frequencies. So I could say that on this route, I want to have hourly service or half hourly service or 20 minute service. That's the way bus service really works. But uh, we will count number of buses. I mean, that's the uh, that's the, the the really technical way of doing it. When we're looking at bus routes, we'll determine the frequency that we want to hit and then determine the number of buses you need to hit that frequency. And that's really based on the cycle length. So if, well, this is, this is going to get really in the weeds. <laughs> But let's say your entire cycle length, so the length from the start of the bus route from the garage to the end of the route at the garage is 61 minutes. Uh, that would mean that if you had an hourly bus service, first of all, it'd be really tight and you're probably gonna hit miss times frequently, but you probably want two buses to run that to be able to make it. That's not ideal. Um, so that's where you would get to the number of buses. It's when you're looking at that really technical level of detail not 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 <laughs> like we're gonna throw six buses at this route and see if we clear all the stops i guess you could do that that's a very expensive way of handling it though <laughs> so all right the oil line it looks like we have some decent ridership there but we have a million buses going at it we have one stop that is potentially passing people out so i might add one more bus to this route and hopefully that'll that'll help us clear all of our stops Next, Parkside, and this one looks pretty light. Well, it would be, but for this stop in Somerset. So we actually have a number of stops that are overcrowded. 400, wow. So we're gonna need to really crank this one and I'm gonna go pretty much to the max. We're gonna throw 40 buses at this and see what that does because we have 400 people waiting at our transfer point itself. And then there are multiple stations that would take three buses to clear. 
So I think we're gonna need a lot on this particular route. So this isn't really scientific. That's not a very long route. Wait, the green route is the one we're looking at. So it is a long route, it's five kilometers. So hopefully by adding all of this service, we'll clear it. This is another one of those routes where it's only in one direction, so, um, and it loops. So this should help out. So the Primo line, this is back in Old Verde Beach. And it's good in the opposite direction it is also good so then we get down to this one oh so same situation we have 11 buses going down here you can see they're all full so these are potentially passing people and i don't know if you've ever had the experience of having a bus pass you but it's probably one of the most frustrating experiences you can ever have um on a good day, it's frustrating. On a day where you're being, you know, where it's a torrential rain or you're being pelted with snow uh, or it's 105 degrees, very, very frustrating. <laughs> so we're gonna crank the service here. What this tells me when I see this number of passengers is we could probably have a higher capacity transit option in that area. And I, I do wonder how much transit we are redirecting from our higher capacity transit to a lower capacity transit. That's something I'm going to take a look at after the episodes that I kind of, I wish I would have gone ahead and taken a look at this screen and screen capped it, but I didn't. <laughs> so now uh, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and do that after the fact. Um, but we'll take a look at that. We are going to need to make these as efficient as possible though, uh, because we do want to have this, this bus service. And you can see we just have a number of buses coming here and this should clear quickly and it's just going to take a little while to, to get this through so let's go and we'll look, look at our next route willow park is our last one we've got one stop here and that is actually the here right here at the bus station that's a problem so we're going to increase this a little bit add two more buses do the same thing over here the thought being there's not really well actually we don't even need to do it on the opposite but we might just to mirror it add one more um the idea being you'd want it to be as frequent i'd want to mirror those those frequencies which again we don't we don't have frequencies in the game but i still want to i want to be cognizant of those and and think about that a little bit so i know that our buses can cause backups and that would be something that i would want to think about if the game allowed for it. Up Bass Street, I'd probably take one of these lanes and make it a bus lane because of the amount of bus traffic that we have on here. But we can't do that. We could go over here to Mulligan Avenue and convert that to be a bus street, at least going up, but I think we're gonna be okay. Look at that, there was a whole bunch of passengers right here and we're good now because we have increased so yeah we've cleared out this queue so i think we're in a good spot with bus service just want to take one more look at this and uh you know we have a 7500 trips right now which is pretty darn good bill from the future coming at you from the past <laughs> and what you'll see is that we have um quite a few more trips in our previous system so this is something that we're going to need to keep an eye on and maybe adjust our bus routes to uh, ensure that we're not backing up this could be backups in our subway system um, it, it could be a number of things but I, I do see that our ridership in the past is higher than our current ridership which to me means that somewhere in our high capacity network we're seeing a breakdown this is interesting we're seeing a lot of backup here it's all hot dog vehicles. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really understand why this is so significant here. Might be time to upgrade this, even though I was really reluctant to do so. So one last thing before we, before we leave, maybe I'll just make a quick conversion here. So we have dedicated turning lanes. Maybe that'll help a little bit in this area. You can see it already is. Wow. So yeah, it's just a, it's a really desired movement in this area is to be able to take that left that we're not allowing. 
So I think I am just going to convert this all the way through. I've been reluctant to, to actually make this a four lane, but I think we're at a point where it's justified. Especially when you see all of the traffic using this road now. It's pretty wild to see all of that uh, desire to go into burning palms. <laughs> so, a more curiosity of mine. Got lots of vehicles going through and, and using that loop. Or kind of looping around back here. So, most of them are private vehicles. So, I think it's very important that we made that connection. That said, uh, we need to cut it off here because the purpose was transit, not traffic. But I think that there, we, we, we want to keep an eye on some of these these things. They're hot button uh, areas, and uh, we'll need to keep an eye. So it's funny when I was taking a look at the city, kind of as uh, at the end of the episode, I noticed that there was a significant amount of backup over here, and I was actually considering coming in after the fact and adding a bit into the video to show that we've remedied some of these issues. But the backup dissipates after a while and look at our traffic flow. We are at 87%. I was looking for hot spots and there just really aren't that many. So I'm thinking that we're in a really, really good spot. There are a couple of things around the edges that we could fix. Now, one place where we are seeing some issues is with our tra uh, with our subway network. And I think that this is something that we could improve fairly quickly. And what you see is that there's a bunch of bunching because of the way that our lines are currently constructed. So one thing I want to do, we'll go through here. We have this uh, government line and the party line and the express line that I think are causing a majority of the issues. So let's modify these route routes just a bit. So let's start out at the government district and the party line. They're going all the way through and getting to this bypass station. I think it's kind of un unfortunate that we had the bypass station here if we're not going to use it as a bypass. Uh, so what I want to do is find a way to separate all these lines so that they're not backing up into one another. So I'm thinking we'll add one subway station across the street from the existing station. And we'll connect up the government line right there. Then I want to take this route and move it over and I think that that's going to help quite a bit. I want to look at this blue line and what I'm thinking is we could stop this all the way over here and I apologize there were stops right here. I pre-recorded this uh, and inadvertently didn't hit record so <laughs> I had to go back in time. <laughs> so a little look behind the hood I suppose. Missed that. So here I want to move this stop over here. So now we're going to bypass this station, so we'll go straight through here and meet up here with the blue line. And those two lines should not interfere. The red line will not interfere with the, the yellow line or the blue line. So the express line going all the way through, not interfering with the party line, and the government district line will be across the street. So you have an, a transfer opportunity between all those modes. The one that we don't have an opportunity on with now is this yellow line. and. The issue that we have there is that we kind of have all this backing up here. So we have our, our if, you, if you look, we've got our blue line meeting in with this. And the way that we could potentially fix this would be again to add one more station. It says that the spot is already occupied. We have this asset here. Let's shift this over momentarily. Add that asset here. And we'll slide this back over as far as we can get it. And I want to adjust this white line. So now we're looking at the yellow line and we are looking at the white line. And the white line is the one I, I care most about. I'm going to move this one over here. So now this one won't conflict. You'll only have the brown line, which is the Bucks line, the one that goes to, from downtown over to uh, the Meadow District Station, interfering there, or not interfering, but creating an opportunity, rather. And we'll have this yellow line and we'll add stops here. Now again, this gives us transfer opportunities and will hopefully lead to our ridership continuing to increase beyond where it was. We're kind of where we were in episode 42B, but uh, I think this will speed everything up and hopefully 
remedy some of the issues that we were seeing. And you see this station filling up. There will be a little bit of uh, overlap here, but we're, we're spreading some of this out. And there's a good queuing distance there, which should help quite a bit. So I think that this these couple of changes will make our system much, much, much more efficient. And you see we finally eclipsed, at least at our resident ridership where we were. I assume the tourism ridership will get up there. I'm very pleased with where this ended up today. I hope that you are as well. If you did like this build, please consider hitting that like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, hit that notification icon. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. You can see their names here. They help me continue to upgrade my equipment, improve my videos, and generally support me. And I appreciate them. And I also appreciate you. Your likes, subscribes, and shares help the channel grow. And I greatly appreciate that. I'm going to leave you with a brief city tour like I always do. And that will start right now.